Hey guys, it's Mindy, and thank you for watching my channel, Mindy's Coral Reef. Today I want to talk to you about a topic that's way overdue, and it's something that a lot of you have been asking about, and that's my background and how I got started in the reefing industry. So I want to share with you a look into my life and where I got started back to when I was young all the way to where I am now so that you can understand what I've learned, where I've learned it from, and how I know the things that I know today. I also want to share with you a look into my life now and where I am today here in Michigan, uh, what I have in my house for my aquariums, um, all the many different aquariums that I have in my house. I actually have another one that I'm just setting up right now. And then also, I want to share with you that I'm not just about fish. I do have other pets here with me in my house, and I want to share them with you also. So stay tuned. So a long, long time ago, two reefers fell in love and they got married. And they had a baby and they named her Mindy. And at that time, they got their business license and they started a local fish store. And that's where it all began. So that's where it all began. So actually the local fish store was ran out of our house from my from birth. I was around it 24 seven. We ran out of our basement. My dad had fish tanks galore built right out of the basement. The whole basement was filled of saltwater fish tanks solely. So we had people coming in and out of the house all the time, uh, looking at fish, buying fish. I remember going to the airport and picking up huge boxes of fish and bringing them home and opening up the boxes. I mean, I was really young at this age and I remember pulling out the bags of these fish and not knowing what was going to be in them. And I think at that, I think at that time, it was, this was a long time ago, you, you ordered things, you just didn't really know. I mean, if they sent you things, that you ordered but if they didn't have it they would send you other things so you never really knew what you're gonna get I remember feeling like a kid on Christmas morning pulling out a bag and it was gonna be such a surprise of like what was gonna be in this bag and you know pulling it out and looking to see what was in these bags and you know one was like an anemone and one was an eel and and, and again I was like so young but I was so into it that from such a young age I loved it so much and that's where the love of this hobby came from so like I said from such a young age and being around it from birth this is where the love of the hobby and me learning what I know started so this tank right here that you've seen in in one of my other videos is my 67 gallon uh, that I have in my bedroom. I wake up to this every morning, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, I have some very precious corals in here and uh, some beauties in here. Love this tank, absolutely gorgeous. So this is just one of uh, my beautiful tanks. This tank used to be a 29 gallon and it's actually now a 67 gallon. So my 29 gallons actually in one of the other rooms, which is now my seahorse tank. And this tank used to be in the living room, which is now a 90 gallon in the living room. So a lot of my tanks I've moved around um, since I've moved into the house. So this is my 67, which is in my bedroom. We had so many fish tanks along the way and I was going through old pictures the other day trying to find old pictures of all our fish tanks and it's I'm surprised that we don't have as many as the tanks but you know I found a few here and a few there of some fish fish tanks of you know some smaller tanks some larger tanks I mean at one time you know we had a custom 250 gallon aquarium that we had moved multiple times from house to house it ended up breaking in the middle of the night one night I remember hearing it crack while I was sleeping and waking up to this aquarium. I remember we also had a 150 gallon aquarium that at one point 
uh, you know, at the age that I was, I always looked at it and thought, wow, I could really swim in that thing. It was so big. This right here is my seahorse tank. I've shown you a little bit about my seahorse tank. This is my 29 gallon uh, tall seahorse tank. Uh, it's in my office and please disregard my messy desk here next to me. My seahorse used to be in a Nano. I used to just have two seahorses. Now I have quite a few. But they used to be in a Nano, which now I upgraded to the 29, which the 29 used to be in my bedroom. My bedroom's now the 67, so I always um, keep upgrading them. But this 29 is actually too small now. I want the seahorses to have more room, so I'm actually looking to upgrade it. I kind of want to make it a cube. I kind of want to do a 24 by 20. I think they'll be happier in a much larger tank uh, than what they have now. This is just, it, the height is nice, but it's just too, it's too thin. It's too narrow. So, uh, so yeah, so, so this is my seahorse tank, which is in my office. And uh, like I said, I love my seahorses. So a little bit more about my background. You know, after being young and being with my parents and having the fish store and learning from all of that. Now I grew up, you know, we moved around a lot and we always had a lot of fish tanks in our house uh, everywhere we moved. The last house that we lived in before I finally moved out when I was, moved out when I was 18, uh, my dad had a, a 150, 150 gallon that he kept up for quite some time. It was a peninsula tank, so it was you know it stuck out it was right when you walked into the house and it was like the first thing that you saw and he kept that up for quite some time and i moved away when i was 20. i moved out of michigan and i moved down to florida you know he maintained the tank but i i flew back quite often i would come back and visit every couple of months i moved out in 2000 1999 2000 so that was before september 11th when you could actually, uh, when you could actually fly with more than three ounces of water. So when I lived down in Florida, the fish down there, for one, they were a lot cheaper, and two, you could get a lot more variety of fish down in Florida than you could uh, in Michigan, obviously. So I used to fly home and visit my parents with coolers full of fish that I used to get down at the local fish stores down in Florida. And I used to bring them back for my dad. So I would bring them back, like I got this enormous green, uh, you know, carpet anemone for his perculas that like li actually lived for like 10 years. It was amazing, this thing was huge. Um, there was like a, a blue tang that I got him that lived for like, the same thing, like 10 years. It was amazing, some of the fish that I got. But then September 11th, hit and uh and that was the end of that i could i couldn't obviously couldn't you know fly with fish any longer but that was fun while it lasted so i used to come home and i used to maintain his tank when when i was home and, and when i visited but when i lived i lived in florida uh for about seven years and i worked in real estate i worked for developers down there uh selling real estate doing high-rise de uh pre-construction developments and i also did personal training also and a little bit of modeling uh, while I lived in Florida and I lived there for about seven years I moved all over the the state of Florida while I did that and then I moved out to uh, California and I lived out there in uh, Orange County and also in LA for about three years and did a little bit of real estate but then also got more into modeling and uh, in fitness I started competing professionally in fitness and doing the personal training thing and then I moved to New York. I was offered a job in New York City in personal training, so I moved to New York City and lived out there for about three or four years. So about 15 years of my life I wasn't living in Michigan and I moved literally every year I was moving. So I wasn't able to have fish tanks because I was constantly moving even though I always wanted fish tanks and I've always like lived vicariously through my father coming home and visiting and taking care of his fish tank. I always wanted to have fish tanks. And whenever I would go to an aquarium or see someone else's fish tank, you know, I knew so much about it, but I never could have my own fish tanks because I was always moving. And you know, it's such a hassle to have a fish tank when you're constantly moving. 
So I finally moved back to Michigan in 2014 and I had my daughter, I have a three-year-old daughter and I had her in January of 2015 and I bought my house here that I live in now. Uh, I bought that about a year and a half ago. So I live here in my house with my daughter, it's just the two of us. And uh, within the past 14 months, I'm finally able to have all the fish tanks that I finally want. So in the past, you know, 14 months, like I said, of owning my own house, I've built all the fish tanks that I have now. So I have my, you know, my 125, I have my 90 gallon, I have my 67 gallon, I have the 29 gallon right here. Um, I do have downstairs, uh, I do have some quarantine tanks, I have some feeding tanks, and then I also have the cold water tank that I just told you about that I'm setting up right now. So I, you know, have been very busy since I bought my house, like the 125 was like the first thing, I literally set that up within a month of owning my house. It was like the first thing, and ever since then I've just been setting up tanks galore. And this right here is my 125 gallon. Uh, you've seen some of my videos on this one. Uh, this one's been set up since I uh, bought my house, which has been about 14 months. It's a beauty. And this one also, I would like to upgrade. It's way too small. It's been something that I've been wanting to do for a while now. Like I think I said it in my last video, I, uh, I thinking about a 220 is a good size. Definitely want to stick with the same size here. I think I can go up to about 72 inches long. So I'm going to probably get, do something that's custom. I don't want it to be too narrow here between the fish tank and the countertop. And so I'm looking for something taller, 72 inches, and about a 220. I'll probably get rid of the canopy and put on some really nice lights, something around there, and give these guys a little bit more room because. I want more corals and I don't have any room for corals so obviously I need a bigger tank isn't that the problem that we all have we need bigger tanks right because when you get stuck and you can't buy more stuff because you don't have enough room it's time to buy a bigger tank <laughs> uh, one other tank I have is my aggressive tank which is my 90 gallon which is right in front of me over here and uh, that one is actually a little under construction. I'm actually doing a complete aquascape on it right now and doing a, you know, it's a complete tear down right now. So it's a little under construction, kind of not really viewable at this point, but I'm gonna show you a few clips to just kind of give you an idea of what it looks like. And then also I wanna tell you about another fish tank that I'm doing downstairs. I'm actually in the process it's clearing right now because I just put a bunch of sand in and so it's really cloudy because I just put all the sand in but it's going to be a um, it's a 15 gallon column cold water fish tank so it's salt water obviously so it's gonna be downstairs and I'm looking to do cold water so it's something completely different I'm super excited about it put some uh, pot belly seahorses in there and I've been doing a lot of reading about other uh, saltwater uh, fish and corals and what have you that I can put in there along with it. So I'm really excited about that fish tank that I'm going to, obviously, I, you know, I need another fish tank like I need a hole in my head, right? So I just added another one and that one will be up shortly and I can do another video on it. I can't wait. I also have a beta fish. I don't just have salt. It's in there somewhere. I have another beta too. And here are my goldfish. See, I have fresh water. I've had these babies for at least a year and they're so healthy, I love them. All right, so now I wanna show you some other pets that I have in my house. So here is Bella. 
Bella. My Bella. Here's Bella. So she's the alpha male. Uh, she, I've had her since she's been a baby. She's about 12 now, I believe. Uh, her, well, her birthday's coming up. She was born in 2005, so her birthday's July 4th. And she's a Chihuahua. She's supposed to be a teacup. Well, she's borderline. She's about uh, six, seven pounds. So this is Bella. She's uh, spoiled and she's, and she's getting a little bit old, but she's my baby. And uh, like I said, I've had her since she was born. So, uh, well, not since she was born. Obviously, I got her from a breeder. So, but I've had her since she was a baby. So, this is Bella. Say hi. Say hi. Hi. All right, and on to the next one. This is Vita. Say hi, Vita. Say hi. Say hi. This is my other Chihuahua. I've had her since she was a baby too. Say hi. Say hi to the camera. She's my most lovable one. She loves to cuddle. She sleeps in bed with me. She loves to be under the covers. Um, she's the little, the littlest one. Uh, she's probably about four pounds. And um, yeah, that's about it. She's about ten years old. So she's. She's the middle child. I have one more that I have to that I have to show you. Yep, yeah, but this is Vita. So this is Vita. Say hi. Say hi, Vita. Say hi. The amount of hair that comes off these dogs, you think that they'd be bald. And the last one. All right. So this is Mochi. Say hi, Mochi. Hi. Say hi. This is Mochi. She's my youngest. Mochi's about eight. Eight or nine. Um, Mochi, you would think that she was the oldest. She's got a few things wrong with her. Um, you know, we always have one child that that's a little abnormal. And that's Mochi. Um, Fortunately, Mochi suffers from, uh, she suffers from seizures, so it's very unfortunate, but, but we deal with them, so, but she's, she's lovable to me, but she doesn't like everybody, unfortunately, and she has this tongue hanging out of the side of her mouth type thing that she does, so, but this is Mochi. Say hi, Mochi. Say hi. Hi, Mochi. Say hi to the camera. All right, so this is my newest addition. This is Pikachu. So I just got Pikachu. Pikachu is a Hoffman Conure. And Pikachu is extremely friendly. Uh, loves to be out of the cage loves to be on your shoulder. So when I saw Pikachu and how friendly Pikachu was, I had to have him or her. I don't know if it's a boy or girl yet, so I need to find out if it's a boy or girl. So. Say hi, Pikachu. Say hi. Say hi. Woo! Say hi. He sees himself. Yeah, do you see yourself? Yeah, you want to be on my shoulder? You want to be on my shoulder? Be on my shoulder? No? No? Come here. On my shoulder? There you go. Oh, Pikachu's not going to like it because Pikachu has nothing to grab onto. Oh, so Pikachu's going to go on my head instead. So when there's nothing to grab onto, because I'm not wearing like a shirt or anything, Pikachu just goes on your head instead. So it just hangs out up here. And you just pray to God that Pikachu doesn't poop. Mm-hmm. So you just walk around with Pikachu on your head. I love Pikachu because Pikachu doesn't want to be like in its cage. And so when I wake up in the morning and I let, let him out of the cage, or I just open the door, 
he'll come out and he'll fly to like wherever I am in the kitchen or whatever. And um, yeah, just eat my hair. <laughs> and uh, we'll find like where, I, she just wants to hang out like wherever I am. So it's really, really cute. And Pikachu loves hair. So just loves eating it. Like, <laughs> loves eating it, <laughs> chewing on it, yeah. Oh yeah, just get in there. Oh yeah, just make a nest. So it's a great hair piece, you know, just love it. So so this is Pikachu, my newest addition. Mm -hmm. For all you that love birds. Mm -hmm. All right, so that's it guys. Thank you again for watching my video. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe, hit the bell notification and comment below. I try to answer everyone's questions as soon as I can. If you find anything helpful, please go ahead and share. And if you have any suggestions on new videos, please go ahead and leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear them. Thank you again, and I will see you guys again in my next video. Thanks again.